Welcome to the MSU Fisheries and Wildlife Club, dedicated to natural resources exploration and education. My name is Emily Johnston. I'm a second year PhD student um, in the Fisheries and Wildlife Department, and I'm working with Jen Owen in the Avian Health and Disease Ecology Lab. I've always been interested in human health and animal health, and um, so that was an interesting interaction to me. So that brought me to the disease ecology here at uh, in the Fisheries and Wildlife Department at MSU. Particularly zoonotic diseases, which are diseases that are maintained in animal populations but can infect humans. With my research, I'm going to look at um, tolerance and resistance in animals. So to do so, I'm looking at birds. So there are three birds in particular that I want to look at. Those are great cat birds. There are kind of resistant bird. And then American robins appear to be more tolerant. Um, in between, we have the northern cardinal who can amplify the pathogen. They can get a lot of it in their system, but they also can get sick from it. The first step to looking at resistance and tolerance is we are um, going to get blood samples from birds and just test the innate ability of the blood to kill different pathogens. And then we're going to do some captive studies. Get tolerance, you have to be able to uh, determine the level of health of an individual once it's infected and whether it gets sick or not. You have to have the, the animals in captivity. So we're going to have those three species, uh, robins, catbirds, and cardinals. And we'll be um, infecting them with, with Borrelia burgdorferi, the agent that causes Lyme disease. Um, and see how infectious they are to ticks, so how many ticks they're going to infect and for how long they're infectious. And that'll tell us a little bit about um, their resistant abilities and um, their reservoir competence, how good they are at, at being a reservoir for that pathogen. They'll be infected with uh, West Nile virus and that'll really be able to tell us more about tolerance and what kind of health impact these different species experience from the same level of um, exposure to a pathogen. Zoonotic disease in particular are really important for us to look at. The biggest component of emerging infectious diseases are zoonotic diseases. They make up 60% of emerging infectious diseases. And out of all the zoonotic diseases, the majority of them are um, have wildlife as reservoirs as opposed to um, captive animals or domesticated animals. Nobody's really looked at tolerance. Uh, a lot of people have done work with resistance and how animals can um, kill a pathogen or get rid of it or, or you know, not die from it. But this aspect of tolerance, those animals that can um, survive an infection and just not get sick, is really important because those are the ones that are passing it on to other organisms or are um, escaping detection. Like we don't even know that they're sick because, or that, they're, that they have this. Um, ability to transmit because they're not displaying any illness. Well, we're always looking for help. I mean, no research is done by one person, you know, individually. So, um, particularly when there's uh, field work and captive studies involved, we will be needing assistance with that. And if anyone's interested, they can always just contact me um, and I can you know, tell them what's going on at that time and what we might need help with. Um, but do you wanna do you wanna walk us through your uh, your favorite ice cream at the oh, dairy store? Phew! I thought you were gonna ask me something like political <laughs> or something. <laughs> I was worried. Um, my absolute favorite ice cream at the dairy store is the sesquicentennial swirl. It is absolutely delicious, and I like to get a scoop of it or two with um, hot caramel on top in a bowl, and it's really delicious. Second to that.